Mm-hmm. Okay, so after scavenging the bodies, you continue downward into the cave. Uh, you walk about maybe two, three hundred feet, and um, as you continue walking, you realize that the ground beneath your feet is becoming much more loose and refined, as if you're walking on gravel. Um, you look down, and by the lantern light, you can tell that there's a strange orange dust just covering the floor. Um, Barry, do you want to rule your intelligence? Oh, okay, yeah, it's not going to be that hard. You got a 13, that's good. So you realize pretty quickly that it is, in fact... Uh, rust that you are standing in and then you all look up and you can see in the distance you can hear a strange gnawing sound and sure enough you look up and you see uh oh <laughs> you see uh nine nine rust monsters hanging out in the corner just gnawing down on a bunch of axes so um fighter i'm gonna give you a chance barry you're a monk you're good you're set all right but fighter i'm gonna give you a chance to just Literally just, you know, crap your pants and leave if you want to. I mean, I, I feel like that's respectful in that con in this particular situation, right? Okay, hey everybody, how you doing today? I started it off with a D&D &D reference, so you know this is gonna be good. Okay, so, do you remember that time at Eddie's Lobby where Zoro was fighting against those marine captains that arrived at the Buster Call, and uh, he was using his swords? You know, Zoro uses swords, big whoop, wanna fight about it? That's what he does, he uses swords. And, uh, you know, he's cutting down Marines, you know, it's business as usual for Zoro. I mean, Luffy's taking care of Luchi, Zoro already defeated Kaku, right? Like, that's how One Piece arcs are structured. Luffy fights the strongest, Zoro the second strongest, and I mean, in Eni's lobby, more than any other arc, we had that Doraki system, right? We had that set up so it was very clear that Rob Luchi's power level was the highest, so Luffy fights him, and then Zoro fought against the second strongest, Kaku, and Zoro already won. So all he really has to do is just fight against some random marines, get on the Mary and get the hell out of Dodge, and boom! Random marine captain just dissolves Yubashiri. It's just, it's just, it's gone. It's just, and it's gone. Yeah, I, I know I used that joke yesterday, but that's how it felt, right? Zoro is just slicing through random marines, and this one guy pops out with a giant newsboy cap on that looks like he inflated it with helium, and then Zoro goes to cut his ass, and he's just like, nope, and then, shh, bye Yubashiri! You really, uh, you really had a really great ending there for you, buddy. Yeah, that, that sword, the Rio Wazamono. We don't get to see a lot of Rio Wazamonos in the story. It's usually O Wazamono, you know, like Nidai and like Wado and Amino Habakiri and Enma. You know, we don't get to see a lot of Rio. And then we got that, and then boom, it's gone. And you know what's even worse is that in the anime, they added to that scene quite a bit from the manga, okay? Um, as in, in the anime, we actually got a little bit of elaboration on the person that Zoro was fighting. He arrives, and um, I don't think he says his name, uh, but he announces that he has the power of the Sabi Sabi no Mi, or the Rust Rust Fruit, okay? Pretty self-explanatory. Um, you know, Yubashiri gets destroyed in one hit. Zoro realizes pretty pretty quickly, you know, this, this guy's bad news. Um, so Zoro actually sheaves his remaining swords, picks up some random cutlasses from around the battlefield, and continues to try to fight Shu using those, um, even slicing him head on. Even if Shu doesn't grab the sword, just slicing him head on uh, causes no damage to him and still corrodes the blade. And so he's kind of having it a little bit rough there. Eventually, Shu gets close and personal, grabs Zoro's arm, and the rust even begins to encroach on his actual body and like rust up his joints so Zoro can't move his arm. Finally, Finally, Soge King arrives to save the day, as of course he is Soge King. He snipes Shu with a Firebird Star, knocks his ass out, he gets knocked out, and everything's good, okay? So, yeah, most of that I just told you, though, was all anime stuff. Because what actually happened in the manga was so laughable, okay? You want to know how much Shu actually explains in the manga? Like, how much does he actually tell Zoro about his fruit and explain, like, who he is and everything like that? Um, you, you put your bets in? You, get, you got your wagers in? Okay, cool. Um, no, you don't get to vote, Barry. You already know the answer. Okay, it's, um, zero, zero for, for that. Um, Shu does not actually say a freaking word to Zoro. In fact, let me just show you the scene. I'll just show you the scene. All right, so here's the scene where Zoro is slicing down a bunch of the captains, a um, bunch of the marines, and there's, like, you know, like, Frankie's dealing with the very good guy, the guy that can turn his, you know, body into balls. He's a grape human. And, uh, you know, they're like, hey, watch out, guys. Some of these uh, marines have devil fruit powers. And Zoro's like, huh? And then, boom, there's this guy that shows up out of nowhere. Zoro tries to cut him with Yubashiri. He just grabs the blade. Don't worry, these 
these blades are they're blunt edge i'm not i'm not actually in danger of cutting myself these blades are all blunt so anyway he grabs the sword and then yubashiri just disintegrates in a single panel not even like a major panel it's not like a full page spread or anything just a little side panel where yubashiri just crumbles away into rust and corrodes and then zoro's like what and then that's pretty much it what happens with the rest of the fight? We have no idea. The next time we see Zoro in the battle, he's not fighting Shu anymore, and he's using a random cutlass he just picked up on the battlefield, and then that's pretty much it. Honestly, most of that chapter is rather overshadowed by the reveal of who Sage King is. Yeah, at the end of that chapter, Soge King removes his mask, and we find out that it's... What a... It's Usopp? That... That can't be right. Sage King can't be Usopp. No, no, no. Okay, okay. Here's what I think happened here, okay? We all know Usopp and Soge King are really good friends. And I think Soge King used that to his advantage. So when he took off his main mask, he had another mask, an Usopp mask, underneath it. That makes more sense. Yeah, there's no way Soge King could be Usopp. All right, so that kind of took up the majority of that chapter. But yeah, yeah. Shu does not, I mean, hey, you gotta give it to Shu in the manga, honestly. He's been doing the thing that we've always been saying for years and years when it comes to anime, and that's usually like, why are you explaining your power to your enemy? Why are you telling them exactly what you can do? Why are you monologuing? If this was any real world scenario and you had superpowers, you would not tell your opponent what your superpowers were. You would just get down to business and just attack them. That's what Shu did, so I kind of got to be, I kind of got to give him some applause there, right? He's just like, okay, I have the Sabi Sabi no me. I have the power to rust any metal weapon I come in contact with. Um, I'm not going to, I'm going to surprise the swordsman. I'm just going to run up and he's going to think he's going to slice me down, no problem. I'm going to grab the weapon and disintegrate one of Zoro's main, you know, one of his main swords. And it, he did it. it. It worked like that. And it wasn't even that big of a deal in the manga. So, you know what? We haven't seen Shu since that day. I mean, we might have seen him in like filler and like the background and like movies and stuff. Um, but we haven't seen him in the manga since that day at Eni's Lobby, since that buster call. You watch out for Shu because he's a no-nonsense kind of Marine. He actually is like playing this by real world rules and that's kind of terrifying, right? Um, so yeah, now in the uh, in the anime, yes, he expands on it a little more. He says, you know, I ate the Sabi Sabi no Mi and I became a rust human. And Zoro's like, oh. Well, crap, that's not good. And then Zoro immediately sheafs all of his swords, picks up the cutlasses, and, and continues to fight him. And then we, you know, take out with Usopp there. Um, and, um, you know, I am glad they did that with the anime, though, to, to at least give us a little bit more of his personality, right? I mean, this is, this is kind of a major thing. I mean, this would be like if... Um, you know, Nami was fighting against a random Marine, and the Marine just grabs her perfect climb attack, snaps it over his leg, and then, you know, incinerates it. Just, it's gone. And then he just walks away, and we never hear from him again. Like, whoa, 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 wait, 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 get back here! You know, some guy shows up like, I ate the power of the atomized, atomized fruit. He grabs Usopp's Kabuto and just disintegrates it. Like, okay, bye. Like... Is anybody gonna ask who he is? <laughs> what does he do? What's his favorite color? You know, like, I want to know some stuff here, right? Ah, oh, okay, so, talking about rust. I, I, I looked this up for this video. I want to do a little bit of research into it. Did you know rust is actually really complicated? You know, and, and corrosion. That's, that's the first dis distinguishing thing I had to look up, you know. Um, rust is a byproduct of corrosion, or like the, the end process of corrosion leads to rust. There's actually different, you know, different end processes with corrosion. It's just rust is the most common. And um, I, I knew oxygen oxidization had something to do with this, you know, metal coming in contact with moisture and oxygen, and that does play a role, uh, by, uh becoming oxides and stuff, and it's just, just, there's a lot more, there's a lot more chemistry involved in this than I originally thought. I don't know what I was expecting, like, type in rust on Wikipedia and be like, when metal comes in contact with water, it turns brown and falls apart, you know, like, well... When, it, when you're talking about iron, that's pretty much the case, and uh, byproducts of iron such as steel, although there are types of, like, um, stainless steel that are a little bit more immune to corrosion. Uh, like, here's an interesting little thing I saw here where you have different kinds of metal, and then you have stainless steel um, on the bottom, and you can see the differences of corrosion uh, between each one. 
stainless steel is very durable for that but i would imagine most swords are that are used in one piece most katanas are, are made out of steel because that's mentioned a lot in one piece like zoro trying to cut steel during alabasta and everything so um yeah at any rate though even if you want to say that i mean like when we're talking about devil fruit powers it's more like embodying the essence or the the meaning of something so Shu has the ability of the rust rust fruit so he has the power to rust any kind of metal um even a metal like stainless steel that's very durable and i also looked into it and i could tell that there were even some types of metal where the surface layer of the metal might corrode and look rusted but it actually doesn't penetrate to the core of the metal. So there's actually some steel structures you can see in the world that look heavily rusted, and on the surface it looks like, oh, that doesn't look safe, it looks like it'll just fall apart. But in reality, it's just the surface layer, like the actual metal at its core. Maybe some, like, engineers or some chemists could light this little bit more illumination here, but really it just, there, there seems to be different kinds of levels to this. But in the context of One Piece is what I'm saying, the guy that has the Sabi Sabi no me, yeah, and just to keep it simple pretty much any type of metal he comes in contact with you know is going to rust to the core rapidly corrode to the point where it just disintegrates and sure enough yubashiri once again yubashiri um rio wazamono grade sword skillful grade sword there's only about 50 of these in the entire world and it, it how long did it take shu to disintegrate it like a second less you know really um it didn't take any time at all and later on we see it uh zoro because it doesn't disintegrate right down to like the hilt um there's a little bit of it that's still left and it's like begins to disintegrate right about here so zoro still carries it in its scabbard all the way up through thriller bark you still see him using you know having the sword on him because it just feels right to have three swords um but by the time he gets to the end of thriller bark and he gets a uh, shusui from ryuma he buries uh yubashiri in the you know the cemetery on thriller bark where the rumbar pirate are buried which is good i'm glad that they didn't at least like, like honestly the burial for the sword is a lot more dignified than the destruction of the sword itself like if any of zoro's swords got destroyed right now in such a weird like really just like glanced over kind of way like oh yeah the straw hats are fighting against uh, the marines and, oh yeah zoro's sword is destroyed anyway going over here you know if that happened now where if the wado or well, i don't have the sandai up here but the nidai katetsu if he gets that or the enma like, like, he's fighting against King or Kaido, and he's like, all right, bring it on. And then King just grabs the Enma and just, just snaps it or just, just bends it and just breaks it. Zoro's like, what? Well, what was the point of me getting this thing now? You know, right? So, yeah, I mean, it would be really, really weird if that were to happen to any of Zoro's swords now. Um, even the Sandai, which the Sandai is a Wazamono, it's the lowest rank, but if, it, if the Sandai is going to get destroyed and we get the Nidai, we get like an upgrade, I would still want the Sandai's destruction to at least be a couple of panels, you know, at least a full page or something, you know, because that's kind of a big deal, right? And may maybe Oda felt that way. Maybe Oda, I mean, he had a lot of stuff to go through with the Battle of Any's lobby. Maybe he just wanted it to feel like, hey, no, the Straw Hats are really getting overwhelmed here. The Buster Call's going on. There's a lot of captains that are involved here, the Marines. Um, so it, it would make sense that they would get, you know, they would have some Devil Fruit powers and they would get, you know, some serious damage from that. In Zoro's case, his one of his swords got destroyed. But then maybe during at the end of Thriller Bark, Oda's like, okay... I did kind of cheat people out of that. I did kind of just gloss over that really quickly. So I'll I'll have a scene at the end of Thriller Bark where Zoro, he takes Yubashiri, he ties like a string around it, and he puts it into the ground, and he's like, you know, there, Brooke's there with him. And Brooke's like, oh, what is that? He's like, it's a dead sword, Yubashiri. I'm sending it to rest here too, if you don't mind. And then Zoro, like, prays to it. And I'm like, all right, that, that was a pretty touching scene. That was a good scene. It's not like Zoro's like, well, I got Shusui. Don't need this piece of crap anymore. And just toss, tosses it in a scrap yard and leaves. Um, he, he, pay, he pays it due respect. And he, like, you know, was like, okay, you did your job well, Yubashiri. We fought in many battles together. Um, if I ever run into the Shu guy again, Zoro needs to, okay, yeah, Zoro needs to fight this asshole again, all right? Zoro needs to have a moment where he's, all the Marines are attacking and Zoro's see Shu and he's like whoa 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 no 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 we're gonna get back for this guy right and then Shu is like you can't hope to defeat me pirate hunter without a blade that's when Zoro just walks toward him and just rolls up his sleeves doesn't even pull out his swords he's like oh I don't need a sword to beat your ass down Bajirum armament hockey like no sword style Yubashiri's retribution boom and it just like obliterates him in one attack that would be cool now 
what about what Shu did in the anime, though? What about the whole uh, muscle joint thing rusting? Because um, uh, keep in mind, you know, his his ability, much like the rust monster in D&D, you know, like if you approach like 10 rust monsters and you're a fighter decked out in, you know, chain mail or plate mail and you got sword, I, this is my great axe. I call it soul. It will cut through everyone with the mighty sun. And then, you know, it's like, okay, rust monsters are, like, guomping you from every direction. Okay, no, that's not good, right? Um, so that's dangerous in that case, but if you don't have weapon, if you don't fight with met metal weapons, if you're, like, Luffy, then Shu's ability is absolutely worthless, you know? Lu if, if he can't rust flesh, like we saw in the anime, one punch from Luffy, but he's like, boom! And then he gets knocked down, and so his devil fruit was completely useless. So, I think that's why the anime department gave him that extra ability, because it's like, oh, okay, so all the opponent has to do is just fist fight him, and then they'll be good. But like, oh, no, 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 he can rust other things, too. And this is not the first time we've seen this. Um, we've seen other Devil Fruits, as well, go beyond the bounds of just, like, uh, what they're normally meant to be. Like, look at Califa, this is another Ennis Lobby Devil Fruit. Look at Califa's, you know, Soap Soap Fruit, okay? So, yeah, it gives her the ability to control suds and create suds to, like, obscure and, like, slip people up and everything, and that's all that suds and soap can really do in our world. You know, you can have, like, a soapy floor that you trip on, or you can make bubbles to, like, obscure yourself, but Oda takes it a one step further, and, like, no... It also has the ability to turn people into that soupy, like super smooth, you know, soapy, you know, um, you know, transformation where they can't even stand up. You know, I don't care how much soap you rub all over your body, you're not turning into this, right? That was Oda's little creative license there. So I can understand that with the rust rust fruit as well. It's like he literally embodies the process of rusting. Rusting means, you know, you're corroding, um, you're, you know, joints get stiff or things like gears and screws get stuck and they can't move as well and so they carry that onward not just from metal but if they touch you then you also get your joints rusted and you can't move your arm now in the anime also when Shu got separated from Zoro when Sage King blasted him with the Firebird star the rust disappeared off of Zoro so it was one of those things where it's like you have to stay in contact so I honestly think yeah that's honestly a pretty balanced devil fruit ability um, if you fight with metal, you're done. He has a massive advantage. Uh, if you don't fight with metal, it's not like you get an immediate victory on him. But in order for him to use your de his devil fruit, he has to stay in contact with you. All right. And as long as he's not an idiot and doesn't explain to the people his weaknesses, uh, honestly, in that battle, more than anything, you know, it was the fact it was a group battle. Um, you know, Usopp showed up and saved Zoro. If it wasn't a group battle, if it was just one on one Zoro versus Shu. Zoro would lose a sword, and then he'd be like, oh crap, I can't fight with swords anymore. He would have to sheath them and then fight with his bare hands, and then Shu would rust his joints. I'm not saying Shu could beat Zoro. Zoro would eventually win, um, but, you know, it, it's sort of like his natural enemy. And, and going along with something like that, um, when Zoro took a random, he's like, all right, I'm going to pick up a random sword off the ground, and he slices Shu, and then that disintegrates, and Shu gets hit with it like, whoa! but it doesn't hurt him at all. Also, likewise, when Shu grabbed Yubashiri, um, he rusted it immediately, but he still didn't get cut. Let me tell you something. If you get attacked by a sword, whether it's rusted or not, um, I, it still should cut you, right? Like, if you had this, like, okay, let's imagine this is all rusted right now, it's chipped, it's broken apart, but it's still maintaining its shape, and it's like, hey, man, I'm gonna swing this blade at you. I'm not gonna be like, go ahead, it's rusted. It'll, it'll feel like butter against my skin. Like, no, I, honestly, I'd be more concerned with getting cut with a rusted blade than a nice clean one, you know? Like, because tetanus, tetanus shots are a thing, you know? Um, so, yeah, like, so I'm thinking either one of two options here. Either, number one, Shu's ability allows him to become completely impervious to any sort of metal. So the very, like, millisecond that any sort of rust, I mean, any sort of metal comes in contact with his body, it instantly corrodes into dust. Like, just... Tsh and so he doesn't get cut at all. Doesn't matter if he's, like, grabbing it, doesn't matter if he's blocking it, or if he gets taken off uh, 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 by surprise or anything. Um, you know, if he just gets attacked from behind, like, someone comes up behind to hit Shu in the back of the neck, and it just hits his neck, and it just... Aha! You know, like, it would be that easy. So that's one option, that the fruit has, like, an automatic defensive thing. The other option is... You know, he is a marine captain, he does rank pretty high, 
Uh, I'm not saying he knows armament hockey at this point in the story, but, you know, tech eye maybe, which is a Roku Shiki technique, which is a technique we just learned about during Water 7 in Enny's Lobby. So, and we see some other high-ranking Marines use that ability. So maybe it's not the Devil Fruit, maybe it's like he's using tech eye on his hands, grabbing the blade so he doesn't get cut, and then using the Sabe Sabe powers to disintegrate. Uh, when Zoro cut him across the chest, he wasn't defending himself with his hands, he was defending himself with tech eye, hardening his flesh and um you know Zoro didn't know armament hockey at this point either so it was just a regular sword against Takai he couldn't slice through his flesh and then it disintegrated so one of those two options I at any rate um I mean Shu is somebody that definitely trains with his powers you know and he knows what to do and he knows he's like hey I'm gonna f you know I'm fighting against the straw hats hey what about pirate hunter Zoro that goes around using three swords I would love to get one of those rusted and corroded I imagine that's what like Shu does he's like can't wait to run into a really strong fight thinks they're so badass because they have an Owazamono sword and then just boop, tss, disintegrated. Could the Rust Rust Fruit work on Mihawk's Yoru or uh, Whitebeard's Murakumo Giri, uh, Shanks's Griffin, all these really high-ranked blades? From what we've seen, from what little we've seen in the canon of the manga... I would say probably yes, uh, except, like, if Shu ever did fight against Mihawk, uh, Mihawk would probably at least be, like, every master swordsman in the world should be aware at all times who is the current user of the Rust Rust Fruit. <laughs> It'd be like, that's number one, you know? Like, when Mihawk was training with his master, whoever that was, he'd be like, all right, Mihawk, just keep in mind, this is the current user of the Rust Fruit, all right? Um, you know, whenever he, and especially since Shu is a high-ranking Marine, he was a captain two years ago, so I would imagine he's, like, been bumped up in ranks. Maybe he's a Commodore now, or maybe the prestigious Rear Admiral. Maybe he, you know, Shu is a Rear Admiral right now. Who knows? Um, but he's probably higher rank. I'm assuming because he's been so famous, uh, a lot of swordsmen around the world would know who he is. So, like, if he ever did go up against Mihawk, he'd be like, Hawkeye, Dracula, me. Oh! Oh! We don't know who they sent to Mihawk's Island. When the Warlord system got disbanded, they sent some Marines to Mihawk's Island. We don't know who they went, though. So, maybe... Shu, if Shu was promoted to the Admiral, a Rear Admiral class at least, maybe even Vice Admiral, I don't know, who knows, it's been two years. Um, Kobe, if Kobe can go from, like, Master Chief Petty Officer to a Captain in two years, Shu can go from Captain to Vice Admiral in two years, okay? That would be crazy, actually, that would actually be really smart, if they sent the Rust guy to go fight against the strongest swordsman in the world. Um, would Armament Hockey work against that? We don't really know, because Armament Hockey, it you know, allows you to, like, touch and damage Logia users, but it doesn't, like, deactivate Devil Fruit powers. Um, from what we understand, it doesn't do that, so who knows? Um, it doesn't matter either way, because Mihawk would be like, oh, you're that Marine with the Rust Rust Fruit. Okay. I, oh, I could actually see Mihawk, listen to this, you could totally see Mihawk doing this. I want you to, I want you to imagine this, okay? Shu and Mihawk square off. Shu has been preparing for this for years, and he's like, all right, bring it on, Dracula Mihawk. I've, I've predicted everything. Well, actually, Shu, you know, he doesn't talk. He wears that veil. He's like, hmm, bring it on. Mihawk's like, I know who you are. And they walk up, and it's like, it, it's like, like Mihawk's about, oh, I guess, I guess Mihawk could just use that world's strongest slash he did against Whitebeard and just shing. He's like, wait, no, no, that's not Metal Shaw! <laughs> he just gets slashed in half that way. That's one way he could do it. Just like the air pressure, just like he's like Getsuga Tensho Mihawk version. Like, no, no, no. So that that would be one thing I guess he could do. But the other thing I was imagining, like he squares up against Shu, he takes Yoru and just he just throws Yoru up in the air, like, and then Shu's like, wait, what did you? Boom! And then Mihawk just uses armament hockey and just beats the ever loving crap out of Shu and then knocks him out. And then Yoru just like. And then Mihawk just grabs it like that. He's like, all right, who's next? He's like, ah, oh, crap, Vice Admiral Shu. That was like our ace in the hole there. Uh, he's like, all right, who's next? Come on. You led with the rust guy. We saw how that went down, right? Um, but no, I, would, I, would, I think Shu has taken many a blade of many aspiring swordsmen. I wonder how many Mato blades have fallen between, be, uh, you know, before Shu. Shu seemed pretty confident when he's when you're running up. To, he's literally running up to Zoro. Zoro goes to cut him, and he goes to just grab it. 
that takes some confidence. That that wasn't Shu's first rodeo. That wasn't the first time Shu corroded a blade. I'm gonna run right up to Zoro and let him cut me and just grab the sword. Yeah, so he's definitely done this before. Probably a couple of Mato blades have fallen to Shu. I, I would probably imagine that much, right? Uh, where is he at right now? Like I said, we have no idea. Hasn't been seen since then. Uh, and we didn't even get his name and his devil fruit in the manga. Like, that was something Oda revealed later in a data book and also in an SBS. We got this SBS where someone's like, hey, so what's up with all those weird devil fruit users in Nenny's lobby? You know, like the guy that destroyed Zoro's sword. Can we figure out who that guy is? And Oda reveals like, oh yeah, yeah, there's Barry Good with the with the uh, Barry Fruit, who's a grape human. And then there's Shu with the Rust Rust Fruit, Rust Human. And then there's uh, uh, Shakakyaku or whatever his name was with the Wheel Wheel Fruit which actually didn't even appear in the anime. For whatever reason, they cut that devil fruit out of the anime. That's an only, it's like a manga exclusive devil fruit, which is very unusual. It's the only one of its kind. But yeah, so anyway, um, the power of rust, uh, beyond just swords and like the other matos and stuff like that, you have to understand how dangerous this can really become, right? Like a lot of ships have metal that are like, that's the structure that holds it together. Um, you know, a lot of buildings are made of metal. Uh, rifles have metal components in them. Shu can grab a rifle and rust all of the metal, and so the firing pin and, like, you know, the, everything, the trigger just, just disintegrates, and you're literally just holding a stick, you know? And, and you know, of course, you have to make, you know, for the, uh, the... Uh, let me think. Uh, the barrel. The barrel of a gun. I was going to say the shaft of the gun. The, the barrel of a gun. I don't know guns, but like that has to be made of like rolled iron and stuff, right? So he just grabs the rifle and just, tss, you are now holding a stick, which, you know, if you're going to fight against Shu, uh, a stick or, you know, a, uh, a wooden sword. This is kind of not really a super thick wooden sword, but a wooden sword would honestly probably get you further than uh, a regular katana would. That is kind of ironic. Going up against Shu with like a crappy boken, like a training wooden sword, would probably give you a better shot at beating him than if you had like an Owazumono like Enma. You know, unless you can do like the flying sa- Yeah, why did Zoro just do that? Wait, Zoro, wait, 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 wait. Zoro can do flying slashes. Why didn't he try that? You know, y Yubashiri gets disintegrated. He's like, whoa, okay. He backs up, sheaves Yubashiri, picks up, you know, Wado, and he's like, you know, s you know, 36 caliber Phoenix, and then fires it. You could have done that, I suppose. But yeah, there there's ways around this. Um, but yeah, ships, buildings, um, an awakening of the rust, rust fruit. That would basically like rust world where everything becomes rusted. Maybe it's like, maybe it's like to the next level. Like whenever uh, Magellan was using his venom demon, which even in a venom demon could even be considered a, an awakening of some form where it's poison, but it's poison. That's so acidic. It literally just disintegrates everything. Right? So even if it's not a living thing, the poison still affected it. It dissolved it like acid. So maybe Shu's ability, like when he awakens it and he goes into like, he just touches anything and no matter what it's made of, it disintegrates, right? It, it's like, it just like literally turns into rust. He's like, no, I will force this object. I will force this wood into, you know, like, like fine particles or whatever. It could be something like that, right? Um... But yeah, Shu is very dangerous. I would really love to see him again in the story. So Oda, show us that. Um, I would love to see o Zoro get his comeuffins. But if you want to wait a little while for that, him showing up at Mihawk's Island right now to bring him in, or at least being one of the high-ranking Marines that got sent to bring him in, because I imagine they would have to send at least one Admiral to Mihawk's Island to guarantee this, or at least give it you know, a fighting chance. But Shu could definitely be on board. All right. So, uh, anyway, yeah, you guys had, like, 20 minutes to figure out, you know, what we were doing against those rust monsters, so you gotta let me know what you're doing here, okay? We gotta, we gotta start playing the game. You know, Barry's a monk, uh, he's got that diamond soul thing, so he's good on saving throws, but, um, you know, what are, what are you guys doing? Okay? Let me know. Signing out. Later, guys.